Hey guys, Phil Baumhart here. So for today's video, I've been commissioned to do a longsword build. So that's what I'm gonna get started on right now. So I got a big old leaf spring that I'm trying to use. So uh, I'm gonna use this uh, this outermost one right here. Uh, I've already cut down the uh, the top uh, spring. So it's got this big old, uh, it's got this pinhole in the middle. So uh, I think that's all that's holding this together right now. So we're gonna cut that off. And then we got these uh, looped over ends. I'm gonna get that in the forge, warm that up so I can uh, you know, straighten those out. Per the customer's specifications, I need the blade to be about 33 inches long and about an inch and a half wide. So um, I've, got, I've got a line drawn out right here. So I should be able to get all of that on, uh, on this side of the, of the hole here. So this should be good enough. This is gonna be a complex hilt type of long sword, sort of a uh, transitional period. It's not based on any one historical piece. It's kind of an amalgamation of, uh, of uh, different elements that a customer wants in a sword. I always like to tie things back to historical references. So uh, it's gonna have kind of a, uh, a D guard of sorts and some uh, different hand protection coming off the sides. And it's uh, reminiscent to me of like a, a Swiss saber and it kind of fits that time period as well as far as the uh, kind of the uh, Renaissance era. So I thought it was kind of neat, it just gives me something to, uh, to go off of as far as uh, reference photos go. And if you're up on your uh, oak shot typology, it's gonna be kind of a uh, type 18 style of sword. So again, 33 inch blade, and then the, uh, the grip is gonna be about nine and a half inches long. So kind of a uh, bastard sword. So I'm gonna start by uh, cutting that down with the angle grinder and seeing what I got to work with. Okay, so we got this uh, successfully cut uh, all the way down to about here. Just doing some double checking on the uh, on the measurements. So uh, right in here, it kind of it kind of uh, it's already got a little bit of a step down there. So I'm planning on this to be the uh, tang, and this is about nine inches already. This will get thinned down quite a bit. So I'm going to have uh, I should have more than enough room to get my uh, nine and a half inch tang. Uh, maybe leave a little bit extra room for the pommel, but this should be plenty there. And then, of course, uh, the blade. We measure about 33 inches here. That brings us right here, 33 inches. If I cut it down around here, then I'll, I'll definitely have extra. And, uh, and we'll have our sword stock, basically. Okay, so we got that curly Q out of there. So now we got uh, obviously our normal uh, leaf spring warp. I'm just spreading out my holes here and we'll uh, get this all straightened out. All right, so not a uh, not 100% straight, but uh, pretty darn good. So, so I've got a pretty clean cut from uh, the angle grinder, which is good. Uh, no jagged edges or you know uh, overlays or anything like that. So the only the only spot that I don't really like is uh, right in here. That's where that uh, the hole was in the center of it. So that was really more of an oval than a hole. So you can kind of see that. So the so thing I'm going to go in and just sort of uh, neaten up that. So our edges are going to be a little bit uh, wobbly, but I'm gonna forge all that out anyways. So we'll do that and then I'll uh, think I'll do the point.
Okay, I might call it good on this uh, preform. So the next thing I'm going to do here is we're going to anneal the blade, or as much of the blade as I can. Uh, so basically we're just going to heat it up to temperature and uh, just let it cool down naturally and let those embers uh, die out on their own and that'll keep this thing hot for a long time and let it cool real slowly. I'll come back tomorrow and I'll start putting in the edge bevels and uh, forging the blade. that first half of the blade orange hot here. I'm going to cover this back up with charcoal as much as I can here. So all those embers will kind of die out and cool down on their own. And then I'm also going to I'm also going to bury it with a little layer of dirt here. So up in here we're about an inch and a half, so right there the thinnest part we're in good shape. So I'm just working my way down the blade.
Okay, so here's what our sword is looking like. I'm pretty happy with the, uh, pretty happy with how it's coming along. Uh, right in about here is kind of where I, the, the bevel stopped so far, so I need to get a little bit more length out of it and a little bit more width. So right, right in here it starts getting uh, not thin enough, but you can see, um, hopefully you can see that uh, we got kind of the bevel going, but I got to neaten up all the edges. So um, a lot of the a lot of the bulk work is done. You know, we're, we're at a point where it's like ah, it's starting to look like a sword blade now. It's kind of kind of exciting. You know, a lot of the uh, kind of fine tuning work, finishing work that's going to be uh, hard to film is kind of what's going to be uh, coming up next, and then I'll have to do the uh, the tang, of course. We're just gonna keep working on the bevel, finish this up, and then uh, we'll refine it a bit, and then do the tang. So that bit in there was uh, a little too short, or uh, excuse me, that uh, wasn't quite narrow enough. So yeah, like right in here, we're not at that inch and a half mark, so right in here I'll, I'm going in with the the lighter three pound hammer just trying to just trying to even all that out so you can see that big dip in there so I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and hit that next guys looks like we're good so right about here I gotta keep in mind that uh, you know I gotta straighten it all and we'll lose some width there uh, when I grind it I'm gonna lose a bit of width as well right there's our narrowest spot I think that's where the hole was for the uh, for that pin that holding the leaf springs together. Okay, so this this spot right here it kind of noticeably steps down. So next to the next, that's the next area right in there. Probably switch back over to the four pound hammer because this is kind of where I left off last time. This big chunk in here. And so just to double check our length, so actually 33 is way down here, so we got quite a bit to do. Son of a gun. Okay, so I got the end of the ruler on the tip of the sword there, so there's 33 right in there. So uh, we are past our past our mark there, so I could probably go in and put the tang in, yeah, right about where the the balance point of this guy is. So okay, so we'll uh, we'll go ahead and mark the spot where the tang is going to be and start roughing that in. I think I need to get a little more width out of this, but uh, I don't know. I think we're in pretty good shape, so. Let's get that tang in there.
Okay, so measuring the tang here, put it right at the shoulder there, that's about 10 inches. So uh, I think I'm going to cut it off right about here. This is the uh, angle grinder, and I should have, yeah, I mean, it was the, the existing width is still going to be much longer than 10 inches. Uh, the hill only needs to be about 9.5, so that way I'll know that I for sure that I got enough material, but I don't have all this extra stuff that I'm trying to contend with. So we'll just uh, cut that off right quick and get back at it. Alright, so uh, here's what the tang's looking like. Uh, it's still very thick. Um, I definitely want to have more of a tape when we get to the, the very end and all that. I'm going to leave it like it is just, you know, for now, because uh, I can always come back to it. Um, so I'm going to go back in to the blade and start trying to just even everything out. You know, we're roughly straight out to about here, and it starts bowing in. So um, I just got to do a lot of little tweaking things. Uh, the edge obviously is not uh, even, so I got to address that, you know, right in here in the shoulder area. This is bigger than this, so uh, we'll draw out that just a bit. So basically, going to take some time, and we're just going to tweak the blade up and uh, get it ready for uh, get it ready for grinding. Okay, so we should be good here. So basically I just sort of got to check and make sure that I got at least two and a half, or uh, excuse me, an inch and a half of material at any given point. With all these little dips and undulations, and I'll lose that, you know, I'll lose material when I grind it, grind it straight. Cause I think that'll be easier than trying to uh, forge it all even. So in here, that's a big problem area, of course, so we're right at right at an inch and a half at those little dips so as long as that lines up so we got kind of a maybe I'll adjust the camera so you can look down it but we got a little bit of an S curve going on so yeah in this area surprisingly we're like right at where we need to be so there's kind of a dip in here and it straightens back out kind of blows out this way so yeah right in here right in here is our problem area I think but I think we're good down here and in this area this all looks good like we're you know well over the quota so happy about that so maybe we'll get that hot and see what we can do there alright so that kind of gives you an idea of uh, what I have to work with we'll see if we can straighten that out Alright, so that's looking a lot better as far as the center line of the sword lining up with the tang. So I still got a little bit of a uh, little bit of up and down in here. Uh, so I'm gonna try using the uh, the vise to just sort of straighten everything out. So we'll see how that goes.
that actually uh, actually worked pretty darn well. Still pretty hot, so I'm getting some uh, heat distortion. So it's kind of a question of uh, you know how much do I want to tinker around, putz around with it. You know, will I be able to make it better? Will I just make it worse? You know, will I be able to fix it in the grind? I think I'm gonna have to uh, do some grinding, and then we'll see where we stand. And you know, nothing says I can't take it back to the forge and do some tweaking then. I'm gonna have to tweak the tang anyways, so not a big deal. Okay, so, uh, you know, looking down the length of the blade, it, uh, it looks like it comes in here and right here. So there's kind of a, uh, kind of a serpentine thing going on. Uh, I'm right at that one and a half inches all the way down. So I really can't take off all that material to, to make it uh, perfectly straight because we're going to lose too much width. You know that just uh, you can see that I just cleaned up nicely. So I've got a little bit, a uh, little bit of material here. I'd I really rather we just keep this for grinding. So I'm gonna try getting this back in the forge, and I'll see if I can uh, kind of straighten it in the vise uh, in this direction. So I don't know how that'll work. We'll uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, so it looks like that's working, so uh, we are getting a little bit of a of a dip downwards now from being in the fire again, the uh, the end start of the droop, so we're going to have to straighten it out the other way, but you know, that's kind of the way it's going to go on this build, I think. Okay, well I'm happy with the, uh, the parallel of the edges, it's definitely not perfect, but uh, I think it's as good as I can really get it. In any case, I'm going to start in on the, uh, the bevel grind. Uh, I've, I was intending to go back and, and thin down the tang a little bit too, and it, the tang is a little bit off, um, so the, the tang doesn't get straightened, but uh, I will do that later.
curious how the sword's looking. So I thought I'd give that uh, horizontal uh, orientation a shot. I never uh, never done that before, so figured why not. Uh, I didn't like how it was kind of slipping around on the bevels, you know, where it kind of ride up uh, and cross the center line, which uh, I mean that was a dollar belt. So uh, this is a fresh belt, so we'll see how that uh, goes. But I just didn't want, you know, I want that kind of defined uh, center line ridge, so I don't, I didn't want that wheel slipping around, but. It did do a good job of kind of, uh, you know, removing material, cleaning it up, and then uh, and then kind of defining that center ridge. Um, but you can probably make it out, but it, lots of little imperfections, and you know, the wheel just takes out these, uh, you know, these troughs, these divots. So for a flat bevel, uh, I got to use the flat platen. So so back in the garage and uh, fresh belt, and we'll see what we can do. Here's what our sword is looking like. Uh, so far, uh, so good. I'm, I'm uh, really digging it. It's definitely not perfect, but uh, the, the lines are fairly clean, and uh, and it's fairly straight. So I mean, it's uh, <laughs> about as good as I could expect. So uh, feels real good in hand. Uh, so far, just without you know, without a grip or anything on there. So I'm pretty excited about this. So the idea with the guard is. Um, it's not going to be a typical longsword grip. It's going to have a, a kind of a knuckle bow that goes maybe halfway down um, with three other pieces coming off, and then we're going to have two pieces that loop back around and kind of provide protection on the on the sides here. And uh, I'll show you a sketch of what uh, what I'm going to be going for. Um, so this is the uh, the other half of the spring that we that we cut down for the sword itself. So to have those kind of three strands, I need something that's fairly broad. So so I got this kind of sketched out of what I'm going to do here. So we're going to put in our uh, our slot for the tang. So I'll do that in the forge, and then um, we got these three strands right here. So I'll cut these out with the angle grinder, and then I'll do you know, all the shaping and uh, and all that in the forge. So. Okay, so we got our uh, bowl punched all the way through the steel. Now this will, this will get widened up a bit as well, uh, but I'm going to have to thin down this tank quite a bit to uh, to get this through there. So, uh, and I'd also like up in this area here, um, I'd like that to be uh, the same width as the chisel, so that when it goes on here, um, it'll be a nice snug uh, fit. So at least by the hilt area, we're going to thicken it up right there, and then the tank can can uh, thin back down because we're putting the wood on there. If the tang is real thick like this, 
you're actually just gonna weaken your handle and it's actually a lot more difficult to try to, to get it on there. So uh, we'll get the tang hot, do this piece, and then we'll, we'll come back to this. All I'm trying to do now is just expand that uh, that slot in the guard so that I can get the tang of the sword on there. I'll probably have to grind down the tang as well. Okay, so I uh, ground down the tang quite a bit on the uh, on the sides here, and then I uh, filed out the uh, slit here for our guard. So now I'm able to get it on there. There we go, that's what it's looking like. So um, I think I'll start working on these uh, on these prongs. We'll shape these up and uh, you know turn them a bit and see how it's looking. Yeah, nuts. I'm just trying to isolate these so I can kind of work at them one at a time. I'm not looking to do a whole lot of shaping, but uh, you know, I just don't want to look like they were, you know, <laughs> cut out with an angle grinder and uh, and all that. So just a little bit to give them some body. You know, taper taper up the point a little bit. So just the way it was cut, that's already got a pretty good taper, so I, you know, shouldn't be too bad.
sky. This thing is looking pretty crazy, but it's the kind of crazy that I want. So you kind of get the idea of uh, you know, the, the kind of triple uh, nut guard in there. So you want it to look kind of cool uh, without it, uh, you know, getting away in your hands. Okay, so I'm going to call it uh, good on these prongs. Um, I'll probably do some finishing touches once I have the, ha uh, the handle shaped up and you know we'll get the proportions right and all that. Uh, but I've got the uh, two tail prongs sketched out and so this area in here is going to basically be uh, waste so I'll taper that in there. Trying to bring this, uh, bring it a little more towards the blade, then we'll we'll kind of point it upwards there. That's what I'd what I'd like to do. I just need to, to bring that tendril that way.
bad. Not bad. So that's, uh, that's what I got there. I think that's pretty cool. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna leave it like that. Maybe I'll. Uh, so again, we'll get the handle on there, and we might do some final tweaking. I kind of like maybe we'll bring this just that way, just a smidge. I kind of want it lined up with the, uh, the center line. I think that'd be cool. But anyways, you get the general idea. All right, well that's all I got for part one. I'll get part two uh, uploaded as soon as I can. There'll be a link in the description of this video. I'll probably have a uh, box up here, something you can click on to, to watch the uh, second half of the uh, build video. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and until next time, be more Viking.